This is the second part of the basic MRI sequences lecture. Additionally to the already mentioned sequences in the first part, there's another important and commonly used sequence, especially when you're imaging the brain, which is called FLARE or TERM. FLARE stands for Fluid Attenuated Inversion Recovery, which is the same as T2, except free-flowing water, like the cerebrospinal fluid, is suppressed and appears black. Protein-bound water that does not flow freely still appears bright, which is the case with most pathologic lesions, like edema. So superficially, a flare sequence resembles a T1-weighted image because water is dark, but unlike on T1 image, a pathologic lesion appears bright. Last but certainly not least, I want to mention the diffusion-weighted image, or DWI, which is seen here. This sequence consists out of three images, one which is a so-called low B value, one with a high B value, and the ADC map, also called apparent diffusion coefficient map. For the brain imaging, the image with a high B value, namely B800 or B1000 image, is important to look at. The B value is mostly written in the corner of the image, not shown in this case because all images information has been blended out. This image is sensitive to passive diffusion of water and must always be correlated to the ADC map. The ADC map contains the actual data which is relevant to the diffusion image. Areas with a restricted pathologic diffusion are bright on B1000 image and dark on the ADC map, which is seen in cytotoxic edema. This is why the sequence is most important to look at in the clinical scenario of the suspecting a stroke, where the ischemic brain tissue appears bright compared to the healthy brain. This is seen here. You see the bright lesion and compared to the ADC map, on the ADC map, this lesion is dark. Another lesion with restricted diffusion is an abscess, so the DWI can also help to differentiate between an abscess or a necrotic brain tumor, which may be indistinguishable on other sequences. Sometimes you can see a bright lesion on the B1000 image, which is also bright on the ADC map. This is referred to as a T2 shine through effect and does not equal a cytotoxic edema. So in order to repeat some of the basic sequences just mentioned, I want to look at a spinal study with you. Again, you can see the cerebrospinal fluid in the spinal canal being bright, which identified this image as a T2. On the contrary, you can recognize the T1 by the dark cerebrospinal fluid. That again is seen bright on both T2 and T1 image. Giving IV contrast is seen here. You can see enhancing structures like vessel even better seen in the subtraction image, like here, dorsal, the bone, there is a venous plexus. Now here we have another sequence that I have not mentioned before because it is not so much used as brain imaging. This is sequence is called STIR, which stands for short tau, tau inversion recovery. Another name for this sequence is term dark fluid. This sequence is most helpful when it comes to imaging almost all the rest of the body, especially when looking for an inflammation, but also an acute fracture on, in bone imaging. The characteristics are that it is a T2-weighted fat-suppressed sequence, so that the only thing appearing bright on the image are water-containing structures, like the cerebrospinal fluid or edema. On the T2 image, you see the subcutaneous fat, but it's not easy to recognize the subcutaneous edema, better seen on the stir image. It enables you much better to visualize pathologic edema than a simple T2-weighted image, since your eye doesn't get distracted by bright fat signal. I hope this lecture could give you a comprehensible overview of the basic MRI sequences used.